Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh, and I am the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. I'd like to welcome everybody to the webinar today. Uh, today's webinar is on the visitor process. So this is the, uh, the fifth part in a five-part series that uh, has been designed just for, you know, primarily for new members in BNI, people that have just joined BNI and are getting into BNI Connect for the first time, learning all about the system. We started out last week, uh, session one was how to fill out your profile and get logged into BNI Connect, and session two was how to use the online slips and pass referrals and record your one-to-ones and all of that. Step three was how to go and find other people in BNI and how to use the bigger network and the social media aspects of BNI Connect. Step four, which was yesterday, we dove deeper and looked into some of the tools and reports that are available. And today, the final step, we are going to talk about the flow of visitors and how can BNI Connect help you to bring visitors to your chapters and get more of those visitors to actually show up to the meeting. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. A Couple of housekeeping things before we get started. First of which, this is a live webinar. So if you have any questions at all, um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask those questions. The best way to do that, um, this is a um, kind of listen-only webinar. Um, otherwise, it does get very, very loud on the line. Um, but if you do have questions, I'd still love for you to participate. Just input the questions, type them into the questions panel, just like Robin did. Uh, she says, good afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon and welcome, Robin. So just type those in, I'll see them pop up on the screen and I can answer those as we're going through. Now we're scheduled for about a half hour worth of content. So it's gonna take you know, about 25 minutes to go through uh, the actual material on visitors today. Now that being said, I answer BNI Connect questions all day, every day. That is my uh, primary responsibility in life. So. I am happy to stay on these calls until every single question has been answered. So feel free to ask as many questions as you'd like, and we will go through them either during the webinar, if it happens to pertain to what's on the screen, or you can ask about anything you want to uh, at the end of the webinar today. We are recording this. It'll be made available in a couple of places. Uh, the first place will be on the support site. You can always get there by clicking on the little question mark in the upper right-hand corner. You'll see our list of upcoming webinars and the links to all the recordings. The second place is on our YouTube channel. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global, you will find all of our recorded content, including the webinars and some short education moment videos and things like that. So please do uh, subscribe if you'd like to be notified when new videos are being uploaded. So. Let's talk about visitors and how can BNI Connect help you with visitors. So first things first, let's take a look at the flow of visitors. So right here, this is a just a very, very quick um, flow chart of how BNI Connect can really help with the flow of visitors. Now the first two steps of this uh, happen before the meeting, and then the third step here happens after the meeting. By the way, uh, this is uh, part of a 53-page manual um, outlining the visitor process and all the different steps uh, that BNI Connect works with. If you would like a copy of that manual, you can do one of two things. Take a look on the GoToWebinar software. There is a section called Handouts. I have uploaded a copy of that uh, manual in PDF as well as document format. So you're welcome to download a copy of it right there. The second way you could do it is just send me an email. Email support at bniconnect.com and just say, hey, I'd love a copy of that 53-page manual. I will send it off to you and you can utilize it that way. So anyway, back to the flow chart. This is the flow. The first step of the process is inviting visitors and BNI Connect has a way that you can invite visitors to your chapter. So we'll take a look at how that works. The second part of this is pre-registering visitors. And this right here is the most important piece of the puzzle uh, because it turns it from a casual invitation into an expectation that the visitor should be coming to the meeting. So pre-registering visitors, we will take a look at that as well. And then there's the follow-up process. Now the follow-up process mostly happens by the leadership team. So it's um, the leadership team going in and 
you know, adding the credit to the POMS report, which sends out a notification and things like that. But there is some post visitor tools that are available to all members as well that we can take a look at a couple of those reports. So let's take a look at this first step of this process, which is inviting visitors. And we do have the visitor invitation email. So let's take a look at how that works. Um, again, I did briefly cover this yesterday in some of the tools and reports, but let's have a look at it again. <clears throat> Now the place to go and find this is we do need to go past the home screen here and we're going to go look under the operations menu. Now the operations menu is where you go to do input and the reports menu is always going to just be read only. So if you're going to be doing input, so here we're going to be working with visitors, we're going to be inputting information, we're going to be sending out an email, we're going to go to operations. So what I'm going to do, go to operations and then the chapter menu. So we're gonna invite a visitor to a chapter. Now, by the way, um, I know we have a lot of members on the line and thank you guys. I recognize a bunch of names that have been here for the past couple of days. So thank you guys so much for being here again. <clears throat> but if there's any um, uh, director consultants that happen to be on the line with us today as well, uh, just one quick note is that you know, you, uh, you'll have access to all of the chapters you support. So depending whichever, um, Whichever chapter is in this drop-down list is the chapter that you'll be inviting somebody to. So if I want to invite somebody to my chapter, my personal chapter where I'm a member, I want to make sure that BNI Wakefield is chosen in this drop-down list. Again, if you're a director consultant, you need to invite somebody to uh, one of the other chapters in your region. Just drop down that menu and switch to chapters. So to send out a visitor invitation, here's what we do. We're going to click on Create Email. This allows us to generate an email. And under here, there is an email visitor invitation. Now, what the visitor invitation is, is this is going to generate a custom email. Now, it's everybody's using the same template. So there's a branded, designed email that goes out that has a nice BNI graphic in it. It has some nice BNI verbiage in it. What I like to do is this This is usually my second invitation to somebody. So I'm a big believer that this electronic invitation is pretty much going to get thrown away or considered spam unless somebody's expecting it. A lot of visiting and a lot of working with visitors is about setting expectations. So a lot of times, again, I'll be out at a networking event or something like that, or I'll be talking with a client, and I'll say, hey, by the way, would you like to come and visit my BNI chapter? I think you'd be a great fit. I'd really like you to meet the plumber. You know, whatever it is that I, that I might be talking with him or her about, do you mind if I send you an invitation? And that's where this invitation comes in. It's not meant to be. I mean, really, nothing in BNI is meant to be a cold calling tool. It's about relationships. So set the expectation that they should be expecting this email invitation. So I'm going to go ahead and let's say that I was at a networking event and I met somebody. His name is uh, John Smith from Smithco, not Smothco, Smithco, and his email address. Now, I want to test this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my own email address in. Now, if you'd like to try this out, if you'd like to see what it looks like, please go ahead and do this yourself. Go and fill one of these out and put in your email address. So I'm going to put my email address in and then a personal message. The personal message is going to be the first paragraph of this email that gets sent. It's going to be the first paragraph of the email that's created. So make sure that it's something that is, well, personable, uh, something that this person is going to recognize that it's coming from you as a human and not just all an automated message. So the personal message... Uh, Let's say it was great meeting you. Uh, as promised, here is an invitation to come and visit my chapter. I would love to introduce you to my referral team. So I'm going to go ahead and click send. It's going to take that information. It's going to wrap it up in a nice pretty package, put a bow on top, and email it out immediately. 
Yes, it goes immediately to the person that is in the email address. So I just received that in my email, and here it is uh, today at 3.10 p.m. Eastern Time, and this is what the email looks like. So there's a nice invitation graphic up here. Let's give people an infographic, so to speak, about BNI. It then puts in Dear John, and it has your initial first paragraph. It then invites them to your chapter meeting. And the nice thing is, again, especially for you director consultants out there, it puts in all of the chapter information automatically. So even if your chapter moves, as long as the chapter information has been updated and BNI Connected is going to include that information in there. Puts in where you meet, what time you meet, the day, the location, all of that. It then briefly describes what BNI is all about. It's a business and professional networking organization. So you don't have to think about the words. A lot of times that's the part that we mess up when we're inviting somebody is we're not really sure what to say about BNI. This is a nice way to introduce BNI to somebody. It then lets them know that they're looking for somebody in your profession and to please RSVP with you. So if they hit reply on this email, that email will go back to you. It is set to go to whoever the sender is, in this case, me. So if I hit reply, it would go back to my email address. Now, a couple of uh, notes, caveats, if you will, about the visitor invitation. Uh, it's not really tracked or anything like that in the system. Um, it was just meant to be a solution to the problem of people don't know what to say about BNI and they threw it out there. There's not a whole lot of advanced functionality so there's no, we're not keeping track of who's using it or how many invitations are being sent out. Uh, there's no reports or you know, open analytics or anything else like that. It's just a very simple email to be sent out. Uh, another question I get quite often as well, can this be used for a visitor's day? The answer to that is not really, at least not as it is. Um, you can see by the wording in here that it's really meant to be a somewhat open-ended invitation. Um, there's a lot of things about visitors' days that make them very specific. So, you know, a visitors' day, you're inviting somebody to a very specific meeting. There might be fees involved. There's a slightly different format to the meeting. So the wording would need to be different. Now, that being said, what I would say is that if you do want to use this as, let's say, a Visitor's Day invitation or for something very specific or you just need to change the wording, send one to yourself, just like I did, and then you can go in and either edit this message. You know, once I go Actions Edit there, I can retype different things in here, or I could always forward it to myself and type things, but then you have the bulk of the... Of, of the information that's there. So you still have the graphic in there, you still have the BNI branding, but you, you're able to customize it a little bit more at that point. So that, my friends, is the invitation. All right, so let's take a look at the next step in this process. So the next step in this process, and again, this, this is the really important step for everybody, and that is pre-registering visitors. Now, this right here is, is the newer piece of the whole puzzle. Um, you know, it's only about a year and a half old in BNI Connect anyway. And the idea behind this is that you know, when you invite somebody to a meeting, and this happens all the time, so you're at a networking event, something like that, maybe it's a chamber after hours, like I know our, our Chamber of Commerce is having a big after hours tomorrow night, so it's a great place to meet people to invite them to my chapter meeting, which is gonna be on Thursday morning. So I could go to this networking event and say, hey, you wanna to come to my meeting? I'd love to introduce you to my referral team. And they say, oh yeah, great, when's your meeting? I'm like, well, it's, uh, it's uh, Thursday mornings at seven o'clock. Thursday mornings at 7 o'clock, that sounds great, I'll be there. And then we kind of leave it at that. And then Thursday comes around and you look around and your visitor hasn't shown up. Uh, a lot of times, uh, part of the reason for that is that there's not really an expecta expectation for them to come to the meeting. So it's more that, you know, it was a very casual invitation. Hey, you want to come to my meeting? Sure, I'll come to your meeting. The next morning rolls around, at, you know, the alarm goes off at oh dark 30, and 
they say, you know what, this is just another networking event. You know, they've never been to a BNI meeting before, so they're thinking there's, there's going to be like a hundred people there. Nobody's going to notice if I don't show up. Now, the visitor registration piece, what this does is it sets that expectation. So just like you would you would RSVP to a wedding shower or to a party or you know something like that, you're RSVPing or the visitor is RSVPing to the meeting. So rather than a please show up, it's a you're expected to show up. And what happens is once we register them for the upcoming meeting, a couple of things happen. Uh, the first of which is they immediately get a email saying hey, congratulations for registering for the meeting. We look forward to meeting you. Please be prepared to stay for the full 90 minutes. Please be prepared to bring lots of business cards. In addition to that, the leadership team, so the president, the vice president, the secretary, treasurer, all of the visitor hosts and the director consultant, they all get a notification saying, hey, by the way, somebody just registered to visit your chapter. This is great news. Maybe they want to reach out to them ahead of time, get to know them, and make sure they're coming to the meeting. Now, the other thing is two days before the chapter meeting, the visitor will get a reminder saying, by the way, you're registered to go and visit this chapter. Again, please be prepared to be there. This right there, again, confirms the expectation. And this is also where a lot of times, this is when somebody will call, you know what, something's come up. Do you mind if I reschedule? So let's take a look at how this works in BNI Connect. Again, the pre-registering visitors piece. All right, so going back to BNI Connect, I'm back in the operations menu here. And the first thing that you'll see is the section up at the top called Manage Visitors. And under Manage Visitors, again, depending on your level of access, you probably won't see all of these options. But you should see the one option at the bottom, which is Manage I'm sorry, register a prospective visitor. Register a prospective visitor before a meeting. This is our tool to register somebody for an upcoming meeting. So all we have to do is, and actually I'm going to switch to Antarctica. Uh, because all those emails go out, I don't want to freak out my chapter leadership that a fake visitor is coming. So I'm going to register somebody for the frozen assets chapter of Antarctica and the Shiver region. So I'm going to register a prospective visitor. All this really is, is filling out a form. I mean, all of us have filled out a form before, so it's nothing new here. Uh, the just need to pick a profession and a specialty. Uh, the date of the visit, you'll notice that I can only choose future dates. So I can't choose dates in the past. Again, we're registering a visitor for a future meeting. So I'm going to register somebody to visit for next week on the 26th. And this was John Smith from Smithco. Now the more information you can fill out, the better. Um, mostly because this will turn into their record. So if they ever become they, a, a real visitor that actually shows up, this is part of the record. If they ever become a member, all this information carries forward with them into the future. So be careful when you're filling these out and put in accurate information. And Hereville, Rhode Island, 02222, and phone number and email address. So phone number and email are mandatory. Um, once again, I am going to put my own email address in here so you guys can see what the email looks like when I get the confirmation that I am all set and ready to visit that chapter. Now there's actually two ways that a visitor can be registered for an upcoming meeting. And I did just get that email, by the way. Uh, hey, you've successfully registered to visit frozen assets. I am confirmed. Again, we're setting expectations. I am confirmed to visit the frozen assets chapter meeting on January 26th at 8 a.m. Please plan to be there for 90 minutes and allow some extra time to network. Remember to bring plenty of business cards as you will meet lots of local business professionals. Very concise message. 
giving them the information they need, and once again, setting the expectation. They'll get a similar email two days before, and the chapter, uh, again, the leadership team, visitor hosts, they all just got a message saying that John Smith has just been registered to visit the chapter, so please be prepared to welcome him at the chapter meeting. All right, as I was starting to say, there is a second way to register visitors, and that's the visitors can actually register themselves, or if there's members that don't want to log in to BNI Connect or don't have a password but still need to register a visitor, it can be done through the chapter website. Now, the way to get to your chapter website, easy to do, just click on regional website in the upper right-hand corner, unless you happen to know the site offhand. Um, I'm going to go to my AntarcticReferrals.com site. This is our site in Antarctica, our testing site. So if I go to find a chapter, and I have all my chapters here. Let's see, I have the Frosty Five, ah, the Frozen Assets chapter. I'm going to go ahead and choose them. You'll notice that on all of your chapter details pages, you'll have a button that says Visit This Chapter. So if I click Visit This Chapter, Essentially, this is the same exact form that we just filled out on the inside of BNI Connect. The only difference is it's on the public internet, which means a couple of things. You would need to fill in the invited by, as well as put in a CAPTCHA code. There's also another copy of this on your chapter website. So if you go to your chapter website, up in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a visit chapter. And once again, this is the same exact form. So there's lots of different ways to be able to register a visitor for an upcoming meeting. Now, once you register those visitors, as I said, that whole email process happens, which is extremely helpful. There's also a report that goes along with it, uh, especially useful for leadership teams or even for visitor hosts that may even want to use this as somewhat of a sign-in sheet. So if I go to the reports section, and for the director consultants, there is one available at the regional level too. But if I scroll down to the bottom, there is a visitor registration report. By, by default, it's going to show me the next week. I can actually, let's say that we're having a visitor's day that we're using to register visitors for next month. I mean, I can look out as far as I want to go to find registered visitors. And here we can see that we have John Smith from Smithco registered to visit this chapter on the 26th that, that they were invited by Jeremy Walsh. Very helpful report. You can also, of course, export this report or print it out and use it as, let's say, a visitor sign-in sheet. There's also a visitor not attended report, which is really just a look in the past to see which visitors uh, were not registered or, or then turned into uh, visitors. So they're still registered, but never arrived. All right, so we have the pre-registration process. Now, the next part of the process is really the follow-up. This one's going to be more for, um, really, for visitor hosts and things like that. Um, but very quickly, to show you how this follow-up works, once, uh, once the visitor has come to the meeting, if you're a visitor host, you should have access to manage registered visitors and mark attendance. <laughs> And from here, I can do a search for all registered visitors. We see I have a couple of registered visitors here. So I have John Smith, who was registered to come to next week's meeting. I can go ahead and delete this visitor if they never showed up. I can also click on the Edit button. Now, the thing with the Edit button, we can also, let's say that uh, John calls up and says, hey, you know what, I can't make it next week, but I'd like to come the following week. You can change their visit date, and it will start the email process all over again. One of the reasons that visitor hosts love this, especially when it comes to a visitor's day, if all your visitors are pre-registered, is that rather than having to fill out a form themselves, they just have to click on visitor attended. They can also choose whether to add that visitor to the POMS report. In other words, is Jeremy Walsh going to get credit for inviting that visitor? And finally, you can choose whether or not to send a follow-up email. Now, 
most of the time we are going to send a follow-up email, but there might be times when we don't want to send that follow-up email. Uh, maybe we're catching up on some data entry months later. It would be kind of silly to send a thanks for visiting the other day, and it was two months ago. Or it could be a, a BNI member that happened to be visiting that you know, they don't necessarily need that follow-up email. But see, this is the follow-up email that I got. And once we start recording our visitors and getting them into the system, we start building our visitor database, which means we also have visitor reports that are available to us in order to go back and be able to use that data later. For example, why not re-invite visitors back to your chapter meeting, the ones that never joined? If you're having another visitor's day, go back to your visitor's database and look through them. And is there anybody that you'd like to re-invite? What about for if your chapter is hosting an after hours event? Go back to your visitors. Maybe they didn't want to join, but it's great to still network with them. They can still make great clients and referral sources for many of the people in your chapter. But as I said, under the reports, there is a chapter visitors report that you can utilize in order to find these visitors. So I have chapter visitors. I can choose any date range I want to. And I did choose a pretty big date range here, so it's just taking a couple of seconds extra. And here we have our John Smith that visited the chapter with all of his details. And keep in mind that if I export this, there is more information available, so I can export this and it will include, for example, the physical address as well. All right, so very quickly, what, one question I often get asked is, you know, does this actually work? So let me show you, Oop. let me get over to the next part of this. So the question is always, does, does this work? I mean, this is a great theory, but does it actually bring more visitors to the chapter? So I was president of my chapter about two years ago. So not this, this last leadership team term, but the term before that. So it was actually more like two and a half years ago. And you know, here I am, the director of support for BNI Connect, and I kind of wanted to use the visitor registrations to to see if they actually worked, and I wanted to have my chapter do that. So what I did was, you know, we were having a visitor's day. I said, hey guys, please register all your visitors on BNI Connect, because what inevitably ends up happening is that you have this big visitor's day, and a bunch of visitors don't show up, and you're expecting to have hundreds of people there. So the week before the meeting, I stand up in front of the group and say, okay, okay, our visitor's day is next week. How many visitors do you have coming, and how many visitors do you have coming, and you, and you, and you? And by the time we went around the room, it was like, wow, we're going to have like 150 people here. That's probably not correct. And I need to let my location know because we have to order food and make sure we have enough coffee and make sure we have enough chairs set up. So I look in BNI Connect and I've been saying, hey, register your visitors. And I look and there were a grand total of six registered visitors. So it was now six days before our visitors day only six visitors. So I put this little email together. I said, hey, chapter, we have six days until the visitor's day and we only have six visitors. Please click here to register your visitors. And I used the link to go to the public site. So they didn't even have to log in to BNI Connect. So yeah, about an hour or two after I sent this, I start getting a whole bunch of email notifications since you know, as the president of the chapter, I'm getting notified whenever somebody registers a visitor. And some people might say, wow, that's annoying getting a whole bunch of emails. I'm thinking, wow, this is pretty exciting. We're going to have a lot of visitors. So the second day, I sent out another email. Great job, chapter. We have five days until our visitors day. Now we have 21 registered visitors. Awesome. And I included the report to show them which visitors have been registered. But even more importantly, who is registering and inviting those visitors? So then four days, we had 26, three days left, we had 34, two days, we jumped to, 20, to 39, and then 13 hours till our visitor's day, we had a mad rush, and we now had 45 registered visitors. Now, a lot of times we ask, yeah, well, how many of those visitors actually show up? 
And most of the time I hear percentages like 20% eh, of the visitors show up, 30%, 50%, 60%. In this case, 42 of those visitors showed up. We ended up with uh, six applications on the spot. Three people promised applications and came back the next week. Now, the interesting thing is you know, I had 45 registered visitors and 42 of them showed up. The three that didn't show up called. They apologized and said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to make it. Do you mind if I come back next week? Very, very powerful. So, of course, you know, was that just a fluke or is this repeatable? So, year goes by, I'm no longer on the leadership team, but you know, the next leadership team, I asked, do you mind if I do that same process to help you out with your visitor's day? And in that case, we had 25 registered visitors, um, 25 visitors in attendance, four applications turned in. I think we had 30 registered visitors that day. So the process works. It definitely increases the, really the number of visitors that you get and reduces the number of cancellations. So what I'd like to do is to open this up for questions. Um, we are at the bottom of the hour, so I do want to say thank you, everybody that has been here to spend some time with me, not just today, but the last four webinars as well. I see a ton of names up there that um, have been here for every single one of these member-level webinars. Thank you guys so much for investing time in yourself and investing time in your chapter. Uh, we do have a question from Marie McDonald. Do we get CEUs for this webinar and the other webinars? Absolutely. Make sure you uh, submit a CEU slip online in BNI Connect. Uh, you want to give yourself a it's, I believe the second one down is the one that has BNI webinars. So yes, absolutely give yourself a credit for each one of these uh, webinars. There is some resources there. Just a reminder, we are recording this webinar as well, so I will get that uploaded as soon as I can up onto our YouTube channel, and it will be active to review. You'll be able to share that if you want to with other people in your chapter or other people in your region. And again, I... Any questions at all, I'm happy to answer those. Uh, by the way, a good referral for me is if you found these webinars helpful, um, great referral for me is to please let your other chapter members know about them, either to have them watch the recordings or I will be repeating this entire series next month in February. So as you get new members in your chapter, please steer them towards these webinars. And in addition, um, we, we're not done yet for the month with webinars. Um, so there is a series of leadership team webinars coming up. We have chapter goals coming up tomorrow. Then we're going to talk about the leadership team tools and reports on Tuesday of next week. Wednesday of next week, we're going to be talking about the chapter web pages and how to modify and edit and update those. And then finally, we're going to go through the online renewal process. So if you are on a leadership team and you'd like to join us for any of those, please do. Uh, so Kira says, I told my whole chapter about your great webinars this morning. Thank you so much, Kira. I greatly appreciate that. And thank you again for being here on the webinar with us again today. Cool. Are there any other questions, comments, or concerns? All right, so if there's no other questions, what I'm going to do is say thank you guys so, so much for being here, and I look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Oh, Gina says this was helpful as a new member and a visitor host, so thank you, Gina. All right, everyone, on that note, have a wonderful afternoon and happy connecting.